Well, I I define capital. I would define capitalism as I did in uh, in my book, Capitalism Alone. And I think it's a very simple definition. And precisely because it is succinct, I think it captures the essence of capitalism. Uh, it is a definition that uh, uh, Marx used, and actually Max Weber used it afterwards. And even Schumpeter, although he added a small one detail that I'll come in a minute. Um, the the definition it really uh, it has three parts. The first part is that the most of production is done on uh, privately owned means of production. Uh, the second definition, the second part of the definition, is that capital is hired, which I think I have to explain that it simply means that labor. I'm sorry, that labor is hired. It simply means that labor does not play the entrepreneurial function. So it's not the workers who are like in a worker commune who decide what to produce and how to produce. They are actually hired by owners of capital. And the third uh, part of the definition is that the coordination is decentralized. Uh, Schumpeter added also the, the need for the most of um, fixed or investments to be made by the private sector. So this is, uh, I think, a fairly economical definition of capitalism. And if you look at many countries uh, nowadays, they do actually feel um, they, they fulfill that definition, including China, which, of course, I have had arguments on, on that. Uh, but it does fulfill that definition as, as being capitalist. So this is, for me, what, what capitalism means. Uh, now, of course, uh, this is what, what it means for me, but of course, many other people have different definitions. Sometimes they, I believe they are too complicated and too fanciful or maybe too uh, remote from the reality or historical reality. Um, so I would like to, to stick to this one. Does economics explain capitalism? Uh, yes, I think it does. Actually, I think it does, uh, uh, especially if you look at the, uh, the rise, uh, which I'm very happy a rise of economic history because economic history is essentially using economic tools to explain history and the rise of capitalism. And I think that the work which has been done in the last maybe 10 or 15 years by various economic historians, including Bob Allen, for example, then historians who had worked uh, on slavery, then uh, the entire set of work, starting with Pomeranz, Kenneth Pomeranz, about the great divergence and continuing that. Uh, Van Zanden, for example, uh, Steve Broadberry as well, the different, when the differences in income between India and China on one hand and Western Europe appeared for the first time. And of course, uh, incredible contribution that um, uh, Angus Madison has made by creating the data set that goes back to the 19th century, which is now being expanded. I think these are all essentially, uh, sir, I mean, attempts to understand our modern civilization using quantitative methods. I would also, since I mentioned many names, I think I should mention also Paul Barrack, who worked, uh, as, as you know, in the, in the UN and who has also one of the pioneers.